Hello. Hello again, lovely people. I just wanted to talk about the plastic parts. So, as some of you will know, we had a little accident over the holiday weekend, and this joint right here gave out on us. It is kind of thin, so I beefed that up, as well as this, let's call it knee joint. Um, but I think I also mentioned in a previous video that somebody had suggested to help with my balance pro problems to elongate the body a little bit, which made perfect sense. And they referred back to the original Spot Mini, and if you look at it, it is a much longer body. So I think it's a great idea, but I was very discouraged because it meant extending the chassis. Let's hide these body pieces for a second. It meant it's extending this chassis piece here, which would mean I'd have to tear out all of my electronics. But while I'm rebuilding the legs here, I have all this apart. Let's hide a few more pieces here. I had a great idea, and it seems to be working out so far. I have all of this shoulder front shoulder assembly apart already. If I just take that... Oh, heck, let's try that again. And if I move that 50 millimeters or so, I just created a spacer block, which is really just a copy of this piece right here. So actually, if I just copy this, I can show you that too. And there we go. She's extended. Now, of course, I had to extend this top plate and bottom plate as well, which I've done already. So... Yeah, I'm going to put her together and, and see if it makes a difference. I think it will. I mean, it even looks a little better. So hopefully those of you who have decided to build this project and started printing, you haven't printed the top or bottom shell or the... Oh, really, that's it. This one piece here, I, I did move the screw holes because it used to screw into the body, but now my filler piece screws into the body. So... I'll show a little time lapse of me editing and, and a little more about this piece here. But yeah, I think it's a good update to the to the project. Uh, we might as well go ahead and move her head into place too, so we can really see that yes, I would like the look of her. So now I'll adjust my legs to step a little bit more forward, or what I have to do to make this balance. But I'll have much more longitude, I guess, to play with so that it'll be easier to balance. Just aligning the parts so I can figure out the positioning of the new holes and such. This is the new extender piece, and I added a little framework in there to help keep the wiring better. Here I moved the holes around a bit, I'm trying to keep up with the time lapse, sorry. In the one existing piece, yes, I moved the, the holes to the top and bottom rather than the side because they attach to the extender now, not the chassis. The extender piece attaches to the chassis, so that has the holes on the sides. And I did add embedded nuts in the top and bottom of the extender, but I don't think they're going to be needed. I was thinking I may have to print the top and bottom in two pieces. If so, we would need those extra holes and, and nuts, but... Anyhow, so here I am resizing. So because I use Tinkercad, it's not Fusion 360. I don't get to actually edit 3D models. I really have to work with the solid object, the STL file. In this case, to extend it, you can see here, I'm just basically cut off the end, slid it out five, five, 50 millimeters. And that's how I work in tin Tinkercad. Okay, and then I can show you quickly an example of how I slice these guys up. So I just use Creality Slicer, which pretty much came with my machine. Um, I've been told and I believe that it is a version of Cura. It's just branded with Creality and a lot of the options are hidden. And there aren't plugins, there's many plugins and all that fun stuff. But I I've, have found that overkill. I've tried Cura and I didn't see it worth me racking my brain over all those options because I get pretty good results with what I would do here. So anyhow, um, here is the top piece. So this one, before I thickened up 
these pads here, you could print it upside down where this is being the top would be the bottom. So you could print it like that, but you still tended to get a really messy curve and then it wasn't the cleanest print. But now that I've added those tabs, I've kind of messed up the ability to even print it like that now. So, um, I was just thinking that I probably shouldn't have tapered them down like that. I probably should have just took this straight across so that it was a flat top, but then you'd still have the problems with the curve. So I have found that printing it this way actually works the absolute best. You get the most clean print you could ask for. Uh, the single drawback is it kind of makes these screw holes a little weaker because now the layer, line, layer lines are going horizontal. So it makes this a little more likely to snap off. But that's already weak anyway, and I really should be thickening that up as far as this whole tab should be bigger. That circle, the holes shouldn't be so close to the edge like that. But honestly, I'm, not, I'm tired of playing with plastic. I want to finish this and get her built, and someday we'll come back and do all that. Or maybe one of you will do something like that. So anyway, this is what I've found the best orientation. So the only, the slants go like this, so there's no, you know, if I flipped it the other way, this would have to fill all this in with, with um, support, and we don't want that. So what I do here is I do do a raft for this, because it is a pretty thin, um, thin contact with the platform, as you can tell. So let it put a raft under it, and it's also going to put support under those two. Let me get out of rotate here. It's also going to put support under these two missing pieces down here. So it, it, I've never had one fall over, put it that way. And honestly, I, I've not always used a raft, and it still never fell over. And then you can leave support on um, everywhere so that it fills in this one square here. The little holes are not a big deal. They would survive without it, but it's gonna, it, it needs support on here. And then my settings, I usually run print temperature on 200 for PLA+. Plus. And then the bed about 65. <clears throat> and then you'll notice here the settings. So layer height, point, point 0.18 is as low as I'll go with these prints for spot. I shouldn't say low, sorry, as high as I'll go. And then I play around with this and go lower and lower. And if it doesn't affect the time or, or amount of plastic that much, I go with it. And then my shelf thickness and my bottom top thickness, I'm always using 1.2 which is, works best for me, and it gives the parts an, a good sturdiness. Don't forget some of these parts, not this one, but some of the frame parts we're putting screws into, so they have to have a little bit of meat in there and the, and the embedded nuts to be able to hold on to those. If you print it hollow, I mean, even 50% is the, the minimum I'll go. So now this is a good case. Since this is all pretty much thin-walled, because I'm printing it, 1.2 millimeters thick, so that's times two for each side of the quote-unquote wall. So we're already up to almost two and a half millimeters, and I think this is only about three millimeters thick. So by giving it a fill density of 50%, you'll see it's going to take 11 hours. If I make this 100%, it's not going to change much at all, so I'm going to leave it at 100%. <clears throat> And I'll do the same with the other settings. And there you go. I added two minutes. So it's, push these settings as, as far as you can. So now the same with this. 0.18, it's 11 hours. So I'm going to try 0.12, which is really pushing it. This may go up two or three hours, but it's probably worth it. Because um, smaller layer height will make these layers tighter together and therefore make give us a little more strength around these holes. So, and really the whole part overall. Let's see what the difference is. So yeah, it added a good five hours to the project. So maybe that's pushing it. So I'll go with about 0.14. And then nothing else affects the time except obviously the support and raft, but those aren't we need.
this one, because I added the square bottom to it, it actually makes it easier to print. And then it, it just puts support under these tabs and these overhangs right here. And it comes out really nice. My, my support on my prototype was pretty jagged and ragged when I took it off. Um, one tip for that, if you're around when your print finishes, take off the support as quickly as you can. Because the part is still a little bit warm, still a little bit weak, and it comes off much cleaner. If you wait till the next day or several days, it makes it a lot more difficult to come off. Oh, look, I messed that up. I'll have to fix that before I print this. This is just a little indentation I put to hold my nameplate. But I was working on this side of the model and didn't notice that I duplicated it and kind of made a mess there. So I'll fix that. But this one, too... Um, it, you couldn't really print this one vertical. It would put way too much support. It would fill this whole tub here with support and you'd have a mess on your hands. So this really is, again, the best way to print this one now. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to fit on my bed, though. That's a problem, huh? Hmm. I might get lucky. I might not. All right, that could be a problem. Let's see. All right, guys, so there's my tips on 3D printing. If you have any questions about any of the other parts on orientation and all that, ask me. I was going to do a video on it all, but that would be a crazy long video. So have a great day.